Okay, um, we are starting. This is the first video of Algebra 1B Credit 2. It's the intro video. Where we're going to cover some uh, topics um, at the beginning of the packet. So we're going to start on page 5. And we got an engage activity here. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to start, we're um, kind of on that third paragraph there where it says the cost C paid in dollars to produce X bicycles uh, for your company can be modeled by X squared plus 10x plus 100,000. So that's the cost. And we're told that the revenue is 2x squared. Well, let's actually not jump down to that yet. It says in manufacturing, uh, revenue represents the total amount of income generated by the sale of goods or services. The revenue R earned in dollars by selling X bicycles can be represented by uh, this equation. So 2X squared plus 10X plus 500. It says in manufacturing, um, profit represents the amount of income that remains after your company pays for all of its operating costs. You calculate net pro uh, profit by subtracting your company's cost of producing good from its revenue. So profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost. It says uh, use the equations for cost C and revenue R to write a simplified algebraic expression that represents the profit P uh, your company uh, that your company makes from selling Y bicycles. All right, so let's go ahead and write this here. We're going to combine the X squares and we'll be talking more about this in the packet. We got 2X squared minus 1X squared so 2x squared minus 1x squared. And then we've got 10x minus 10x. Well, that'll be easy. And then 500 minus 100,000. All right, so we simplify this. 2 minus 1 is 1, so we have 1x squared or just x squared. 10 minus 10 is 0x. And then 500 <coughs> minus... 100,000 would be a negative 99,500. All right, now we can simplify a little bit further because whenever you have a coefficient of zero, you don't need to write that term because zero times anything is just zero. So zero x, would, regardless of what x is, would just be zero. So we just have x squared minus 99,500. And uh, that's what you're going to put there for um, the... Uh, profit expression. Now, it says below, it says, if you manufacture and sell 200 bicycles in January, will your company make a profit? Well, that's important because uh, if a company doesn't make a profit, uh, you're not going to be in uh, business very long. So for 200 bicycles, we put 200 in for X. 200 squared, which means 200 times 200 would be 40,000. And whoops, didn't write that right. And we've got forty thousand minus ninety nine thousand five hundred, which would be a negative fifty nine thousand five hundred. Negative means we lost money. So did we make a profit? No, there was a loss of fifty nine thousand five hundred dollars. Then the last question on the page it says, if you manufacture and sell five hundred bicycles in May. Will your company make a profit for the month and show your thinking, right? Well, let's show our work here. So instead of 200, we're going to plug in 500 for X. 500 squared, 500 times 500 is 2,000, excuse me, 250,000. Minus the 99,500 gives us a positive 150,500. So that's a plus. So yes, we made money. May. All right, so there's uh, kind of a bit of an application of polynomials and kind of a hint at what to come when we get into uh, adding and then evaluating polynomials. All right, so a little more stuff on the intro. I'm going to turn over to page six and uh, we're going to be going over some, uh, some uh, combining like terms. All right, so Number four, there on page six, we've got 8a plus 5 minus 10a minus 11. So we always want to combine the like terms, first of all, or group the like terms. So we have 8a minus 10a. 
So remember, like terms means same variable with same exponent. So there's there's no exponents on the a's. We just assume it's one. Uh, but we don't need to write it. All right, now, so that takes care of the a's. The constants, we got 5 minus 11. So working this out, we have 8a minus 10a, uh, which would give us a negative 2a. And then 5 minus 11, which gives us a negative 6. So we end up with um, negative 2a minus 6. All right, so let's take a look at number 5 now, more combining like terms. We've got negative 7 plus d minus 6 plus 2d. All right, so let's start by grouping our, uh, let's go from start with the constants here because that's what came first. So the constant term, remember a constant term is just a term uh, that doesn't have a variable in it. So we've got negative 7 and then minus 6. And then the variables, the d's, we've got d plus 2d. All right, so negative 7 minus 6. Negative 7 minus 6 is negative 13. And d plus 2d, remember if there's no coefficient, there's a 1 there. 1 plus 2 is 3, so that would be 3d. So negative 13 plus 3d. All right, so now at the bottom of the page, we're going to get into a minus about evaluating expressions. So if some of this is a little fuzzy, it's going to help if it's down a, a little bit good at, when we get into the packet, so maybe, if necessary, maybe rewatch some of this if you need to. All right, so our number seven, or excuse me, number eight, we have x to the third plus x squared, and we are told that x is equal to negative two. So we want the directions are to find the value or evaluate the expression. So we're going to plug in negative two for x. Now, negative 2 to the third power, negative 2 to the third means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, or if you multiply all that up, that's negative 8, because negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 2 squared, that just means two of them, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and then negative 8 plus 4, again, you can verify that on the calculator, is negative 4. All right, let's go to number 9. All right, number nine, we have uh, x to the third minus four. There's only one variable to plug in for, and we're told that x is equal to three. So we're just going to plug three in for x. Three to the third power, uh, remember, it doesn't mean three times three. It means three times three times three. Remember, this is the number you're multiplying. This is how many you're multiplying. So three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. 27 minus 4 is 23. So that is number 9. All right, let's go to number 10. Number 10, we have uh, x to the third minus 4 again. Okay. And we're told that x is negative 3 this time. So we have negative 3 to the third power minus 4. So negative 3 to the third power is negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And then positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. And then finally, negative 27 minus 4 would be negative 31. And that is it. All right, and that is it for page 6. All right. Uh, over on page 7, we're going to first of all go over the distributive property. Just a few quick examples, a few quick reminders. Number 4, we have 8 times 3a plus 5. So remember when you do the distributive property, you have to multiply what's outside to everything that's inside. So we have 8 times 3a and then 8 times 5. 8 times 3 is 24, so 24a, 8 times 5 is 40. So 24a plus 40. That is number four. All right, number five, we've got four times six minus 2d. And again, same thing, we're going to distribute or multiply that four to both the terms inside the parentheses. So we've got four times six and then four times negative 2d. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we got 24 minus 
D, and that is number five. All right, number six, just moving through these, aren't we? We got nine uh, times 2x minus 7y, same thing. We're going to distribute that nine to what's inside the parentheses. We got nine times 2x and then nine times negative 7y. 9 times 2 is 18, so 18x. 9 times negative 7 is negative 63y, and that is it. Okay, finally, uh, numbers 7 through 10 at the bottom, and we're dealing with uh, the laws of exponents. All right, so number 7, we got y to the third times y to the sixth. So remember, when you're multiplying and you have the same base, the base here is the y's, uh, you add the exponents. So it's y to the 3 plus 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. And we might just try and let's see if we can squeeze all these up here. Uh, go a little bit quicker. All right, next is number 8. We have uh, n to the 10 over n to the 2nd. All right, so when we multiply, we added the exponents. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. So top minus the bottom, 10 minus 2, and that would be 8. So n to the 8th power. And that was number 8. Appropriately enough, n to the 8th power, right? All right, number 9, we have uh, 8 to the 3rd plus 8 to the ninth over 8 to the 4th. Okay, so we've got both going on here. We got multiplying and we got division. Uh, remember, we treat the fraction bar as grouping symbols, meaning that we're going to deal with these first. So we add 3 plus 9 is 12. And then we divide, we subtract. So we got 12 minus 4. 12 minus 4 would be 8. And so, again, how we got the 8 was for 12 minus 4, and that is it. So A to the 8. Okay, so finally, number 10, we have m to the second times m to the fifth times m to the third. All right, so we're multiplying same rules, even though we got three terms or three, well, it's all one term, but three m's up here. We're just going to, we're multiplying, so we're just going to add up all the exponents. 2 plus 5 plus 3. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. So that would be m to the 10th power. And that is it. And I believe that is it for the intro video. So as always with the uh, intro videos, uh, there is no homework. This is just a prerequisite important skills that you need for the credit. And so that is it. So you can go right into the next lesson, which is 17.1, which is understanding polynomial expressions. And we will see you in the next video. Again, no homework for this video. And you can go straight to the next video. Good luck with that.